So this is a question that involves, as the hint, when I was hovering over earlier, hint was saying, it involves more than one conservation law. It involves conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. And uh, I actually have a, a demo uh, that I like to do in face-to-face -face class. Um, the, so here, uh, momentum is conserved because this ramp is free to move. And the reason the way it, this ramp moves is because of Newton's third law as this, uh, so this is how the forces work out. Now you don't need this for this particular problem. So as this cart is on this ramp, here are the forces on that cart. There's gravity mg and there's a normal force and pushing on the cart that way. So when you look at the force on the ramp, there will be gravity pulling it down and you know, there is a normal force on that from the floor underneath. So, and began, and there is a, there's a reaction force pair to this normal force. So there's a normal force pointed that way. That's the reaction force pair of that. Uh, that's why the ramp moves to the right. And um, for the, in the context of chapter nine, what that means is the total momentum of this entire system is conserved. That's why you have this ramp moving to the right and um, you cannot ignore that. So, so yeah, so in trying to solve for these two velocities, velocity of the cart and the velocity of the ramp, uh, we are going to, uh, we are going to use, need to use a problem solving strategy where we recognize both of those conserved quantities, energy and momentum. And I think I'm just gonna use the snapshots that are kind of naturally given to me here. So I'll use this as my snapshot one or quote unquote initial and use this as my snapshot two or quote unquote final. I, I think that's a kind of natural setup. And because the momentum and energy are conserved throughout the entire setup, I don't think I need to break it into different parts. Like I don't need to look at, oh, when the cart is at the bottom. And then, so I don't need to do that. I can just take the whole thing as a whole. All right, so let me, um, so I, I think uh, looking at the situation, it's clear enough that both energy is, so that energy is conserved, that there is no non-conservative force that you're doing work on the system. Now there's this tiny matter of the normal force which is apparently doing work on the uh, ramp and the cart, because that's the only way ramp would move. But the function of this normal force is it's basically transferring energy from cart to the ramp. So as long as you are considering the entire system, the normal force does not cause the system to lose energy. So I can kind of ignore the fact that normal force is doing work. And there is no friction force and gravitational force, although it's doing work, it's a conservative force. The work done by gravitational force is accounted for in change of potential energy. So let me write down conservation law equations. Uh, conservation equations. So I'm going to have conservation of energy. Um, and let me kind of skip some of the other steps that I was doing earlier where I'm writing down total energy. You know, let me just write them all down. I think it's just quick enough to just write it down. So total energy in snapshot one is equal to total energy in snapshot two. And what I'm looking, so in, by total energy, we mean potential energy uh, plus the kinetic energy and potential energy plus the kinetic energy. And here the situation is set up so that the only potential energy we are dealing with is gravitational potential energy. And now I'm kind of writing this in a schematic sense because when you are starting to write down the real um, expressions as in where you can actually plug in numbers too, you have to keep in mind that you have two separate objects and it's a, uh, important to write down energy expressions for all of them individually. Now I'm going to use a bit of a simplifying convention, um, which will allow me to not write down things that I don't need to write down, is to say that this ramp, it has gravitational potential energy of zero. 
I'm kind of defining my coordinate system in whatever way I need to, so that I can say that in the, in the snapshot one, the ramp has zero gravitational potential energy. And because the ramp is not changing in height, I can, that will allow me to say that it's gravitational potential energy remains at zero here. So that'll kind of simplify my expression a little bit. And um, this card here, it's at height h. So I'll need to account for that when I write down my potential energy, it's gonna be, it's going to have potential energy of mgh at the beginning. Um, plus, for the kinetic energy, I think all I need to do is acknowledge that it's a zero at the beginning. The cart is at rest, the ramp is at rest, zero kinetic energy all throughout. The total energy final, um, so I guess when I wrote down mgh, I kind of implicitly saying that the potential energy of the cart at the snapshot two is equal to zero. So I'm going to say just the zero potential energy at the end. And here for the kinetic energy, I have to be sure to write them separately. Kinetic energy of the cart and kinetic energy of the ramp. So plus one half mass of the cart times G, not G, mass of the cart times its speed V sub C squared plus one half mass of the ramp V ramp VR squared. So this is the expression for conservation of energy. Now I need to write down conservation of momentum. Uh, let me do that. So conservation of momentum, it's a, so the way all the conservation laws are written down are the same. Uh, you have the conserved quantity and you start out with a statement that the total of that quantity at one part of the snapshot is equal to total of the quantity in another part of the snapshot, snapshots one and two. And in snapshot one, the total momentum is easy to calculate. It's a zero because nothing is moving. So I have zero is equal to the total momentum at the end. And, um, and my own practice for problem solving is, I like to write down my equations in a way where all my symbols are positive quantities, or at least they are expected to be positive. Um, that, um, so that's what I like to do, at least uh, with the physics 4A type problems. And the reason I like that is it, uh, it allows me to spot quickly when I have a quantity that's uh, unexpectedly negative. So let me do it that way, and then I will kind of uh, to tell you a little bit of caution in terms of electronic problems homework systems. So here, as I'm writing down momentum of, total momentum in snapshot two, I see my cart is moving to left, and I'm going to say that's moving in the negative direction. So I'm going to write down for the momentum of the cart, minus mvc. And what this minus sign represents is that I'm trying to make this uh, speed, so vc represents the speed, a positive velocity. And you don't have to do it that way, but this is uh, how I like to set up my equations so that if ever any of my quantities are not, they don't have expected the sign, I can spot that quickly. Okay, so the moment of the ramp, it's moving to right, so I'm gonna write down plus and we are. So, um, so those are all my conservation law equations. At this point, I like to count all my equations and all my unknowns so that I know I have all the necessary information to finish solving this question. I have one, two equations, and let's see. Uh, I, so I'm given the masses and I'm given the height. So I should, oh, and I, I guess my unknowns were given. Uh, my speeds are unknown. So yeah, I have two unknowns two uh, equations, I should be able to solve it. It's a matter of algebra. And kind of staring at it for a second, I think uh, what's the uh, easiest thing for me to do is, uh, let me, so let me do this first. Solve equation two in terms of one of the velocities that will let me use that solved for velocity, plug that into equation one and, um, get, um, and solve systematically that way. So let me solve, I, like, I want to get rid of the velocity, speed of the ramp. So let me solve this for speed of the ramp. 
So spinning it for uh, solving it for VR, I get um, so I'm imagining moving this over. Um, so I have small m over big m uh, times vc. I think that's correctly solved for. Uh, make sure to check it. So with that tool in my hand, I'm going to eliminate VR from all my expressions. Let me move equation one here. And I'm going to be substituting in that uh, expression for VR that'll get me to this place here. MGH is equal to one half MVC squared plus one half capital M times VR squared, which is going to be that thing squared. So small m over big M squared times VC squared. Oh, wow, I think it's relatively easy because I only have a VC squared term. I can solve for VC and then take the square root. So let me just go through this solution step. So uh, let me imagine factoring out VC from both sides. Uh, both the terms, then what I get is um, VC squared times uh, one half M plus, let me simplify this here, it's going to be M squared divided by two, one factor of M cancels out with that, so just the one capital M. I think I can actually factor out uh, one half M to make my expression a little bit prettier vc squared over 2m oops uh, m is in the wrong place <clears throat> vc squared over 2 times m uh, 1 plus uh, I think that's a, a small m over big m and uh, I move everything else to the left hand side or the side where mgh is so for vc let me do that here um, Doing that, I get this. Vc squared is equal to, uh, oh, oh, I think uh, I have a one factor of m canceling out. It's nice. Um, so I have 2gh on the numerator. 2gh divided by uh, this quantity here. 1 plus ratio of the masses. Small m over big M. Um, I think that's everything. So if I take the square root of both sides, then I can get rid of the square here. So, so all right, that's the speed of the cart. Um, seems reasonable. And there's a kind of a um, sanity check that's uh, useful to do, which is, and one of the ways you can do a sanity check is to kind of think of a limiting scenarios. Here, a limiting scenario is where you imagine that the capital M is much larger than a small m, or it goes to infinity, or I guess more realistically, it's much larger than small m. In that case, this ratio goes to zero, so your uh, solution for speed of the cart goes to square root of 2gh. And when you see that, I hope you recognize that as kind of a speed of something that's fallen down from some height age and that uh, this answer actually makes sense. If the ramp is so heavy that it doesn't move, then, uh, then the speed that the car would have is that square root of 2gh. So, so that's a kind of a sanity check, making sure that this answer here is compatible with other simpler answers that you know in a simpler situation. So at this point, I think it's uh, easier to just plug in the numbers. And once I have number for VC, I can plug that in for VR to get number two. So let me, um, since, let me just uh, yeah, plug in the numbers with the calculator. I have, um, uh, okay, <laughs> that's enough to show everything. Um, <clears throat> so I have, uh, let me calculate 2GH first, two times G, 9.8 times H, 2.75, that's my numerator. That's gonna be divided by, uh, parenthesis, one plus the ratio of the masses, 1.5 over M, parenthesis closed. That's what's under square root. So let me take the square root of that. 
uh, 6.439. I'm just keeping some additional uh, significant figures because it then never hurts. Um, so 6.439. It should be meters per second. I kept everything in SI unit. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna plug that into here. That will get me. Um, so I, I guess I have the value there already. So I'm gonna use that. Multiply that with the small m, 1.5, divide by big M, five. That gets me 1.9, just gonna write down, you know, 1.9317. One point nine three one seven. Once we fix the rounding issue, you don't have to keep so many sig figs. Um, you can just keep usually three sig figs, and you should be fine. So let me plug in those answers and see what I get. So this was question. I think, well, 15, sixteen or fifteen? Yeah, sixteen. Okay, let me plug in those answers. Speed of the cart is six point four three nine. Speed of the ramp. 1.9317. And when you submit it, you see, oh, it says, does this have the correct sign? And that's where you read the question carefully. Uh, it's asking for the velocities of the ramp and the cart. So velocity is the vector quantity. Uh, they want you to indicate direction. And I guess in this question, there's nothing that where you're indicating direction. So I guess they want you to use the sign to indicate the direction. So. <laughs> So, you know, it's a kind of a feature of an electronic system. If uh, you are doing this on exam, like if I'm able to see all your work, then whether you have positive here or negative here, that wouldn't matter because I can see in your work that, uh, uh, I can see in your work here that you are um, treating this as having, uh, you are, I can see in your work that you are accounting for all the signs correctly. But you know, with the online homework system, that is one downside that it grades rather rigidly. And you should just read the question carefully and um, kind of follow. This is why you have more than one attempt and you don't get penalized between attempts. So that um, if you somehow miss the fact that they wanted you to indicate the direction as, as well with your answer, then you can get that once it says, um, <laughs> once it points out that this doesn't appear to be the correct sign.